So I've been playing the 100 baby challenge for the past couple of months, but I also did it a couple of years ago back in 2019 that took me a year to complete. And let me just tell you back then, pre-infants, child's play. But now that we have growing together and infants, 10,000 times more chaotic and stress inducing. So I decided to build a orange suburban family home while wearing an orange skirt to match the vibe and the theme of the 100 baby challenge. So by all means, I am no expert at the 100 baby challenge. Even though I have played it before from like pre-infants and with infants, I have learned a thing or two when playing them, especially of having a hundred babies with a hundred different sims, whether they're vampires, mermaids, werewolves, aliens, spellcasters, plant sims, everything, even Father Winter himself. It's like so interesting on how like the added benefit of having an occult baby rather than like a human baby, because the way that I play it is probably a little bit different on how you play it. Even though I know a lot of people do the same thing where they count each occult baby as two, because essentially they're half human, half, you know, supernatural. So like they count as like two sims, I always think. I have yet to have any occult babies, which is very bad on my end. I would be at like 50 babies by now. But since my matriarch is like not a spellcaster and has like a very weak bloodline and doesn't really have any added benefits of having any occult kids just yet, it has made it a little bit difficult and made the challenge a little bit slower for me. But I have noticed a lot more cool things that have been added to the game. Like now that we have werewolves and now that we have like, you know, more cool supernatural characters, you can have really interesting occult children. And I'm playing with the same family that I played the original 100 baby and the black widow and the 300 baby in. So if you want to go watch the entire series of, all that mess, the Sailor family. I will link down below the playlist collection because right now I'm on generation five of the Sailor family. And I'm really surprised that my save file has not like been broken or like caused any issues yet of me playing the same family for five generations with several different challenges, especially how many Sims have been born in this challenge. Like, I don't know how it is. I'm surprised it's still lasting this long. So my goal in life is to keep playing with the same family with the same amount of Sims inside the save file until it breaks. Like when it breaks, then I know I have accomplished a lot of things. I think I definitely want to try and achieve the legacy player of having 10 generations with the same family just to see how crazy the family tree can get. Now, the last time that I looked at the family tree, it was a little bit messy and like jumbled because we had 300 babies from the last gen and then 100 babies from like gen one and two. So the family tree now recently is like very broken. Like it's to the point where you cannot see the previous gens at all, but I do have the original graves, which is a good thing on my end because, you know, Mementos, you got to keepsake all those things for, you know, lovely memories saying, oh, that was my father. That was like my great, 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 great grandmother. I mean, there's so many. I know, I know we had Hypnotic Hope or Claire Hope was Gen 1. Hypnotic Hope was, I think, Gen 2. Gen 3 was something. And then Gen 4 was Lucius Sonic Sailor. And then Gen 5 is Hunter Sailor. And she was like the 300th child to be born in that challenge alone, which I thought was funny. So I really thoroughly enjoyed like playing through the family lineage, especially seeing how the family genetics change over time, especially having that many kids. And the reason why I wanted to do this challenge again was to experience what like infants were like and also how can I really like take my time with this challenge without rushing through it. Because I realized that having 100 babies can be a little bit difficult for some people, especially now that we have infants with like base game and growing together, it's 10,000 times harder. But when you only have base game, there really isn't much you can do. So they're like kind of like objects like newborns are. And I think you wouldn't have like, like a lot of fun with them. So my personal recommendation is like adding grown together just to see what the milestones are like. And I think the milestones make it a lot more fun, even though it can get a little bit repetitive. There are like, you know, first bubble bath and like, you know, first bath, first blowout, which are pooping their pants, basically. First laugh, first coo, standing up. Like it's so cute on what infants can do. And I'm in love with the infants, even though they cause me physical and emotional stress. I still love them. And you would think that I would like love them like way, way, way more. 
like not in a challenge setting. But here's the thing. I have yet to have an infant like at all without doing this challenge. Like I have my own personal like legacy play that I do for myself. And it's with Aspen, you know, O'Connor. And she has yet to have another baby because her fiance died and they were going to have another baby, but it just did not work out. So I have yet to like experience what infants are like without the 100 baby. <laughs> and I feel like I'm losing my mind every time that I play this challenge because they call your sim so much or like they like cry so much where like they're calling saying, take care of me, feed me, change me. So another recommendation to everyone who's trying to do a new challenge, don't do this one the first one because you will quit the Sims from the very beginning because it's not a very good starter friendly challenge, but the way that I've been playing it has made it a little bit easier for me because how I did it before took a little bit longer because you had to wait until we could get the children to like an A level in their school to age them up and also kick them out. And then also, I think we didn't have, maybe we did have toddlers back then, back in 2019. Oh no, we did. We did. We did. We did have toddlers back in 2019. I remember now. But what I've been doing with all my toddlers, I pet babies straight up, straight off, you know, the birthing floor. As soon as my children are toddlers, they get an iPad or a a tablet, as you would call them. I pet babies through and through 100%. So that's what I do with them. And I make sure I get level three in all their skills for toddlers. For infants, I try to get at least three milestones per category because I'm following what Dr. Gluon did because he made a tweet a while ago back when we actually got infants and he tried out the challenge. He said, try three milestones per category. That way it's a little bit easier because the milestones can go on forever and there's like an infinite amount of milestones. So if you get three at least, you're like basically get to go to age them up and then you're like, you're there. So that has made the challenge a little bit more easier to do. And I've been liking what I've been doing. And I'm glad I did what I did. Because eventually, if I didn't do the milestones, I probably would have had a hard time. And I was going to add in the added benefit of like trying like their foods and the high chair. But I didn't want to really, you know, do the high chair scenario thing and have them like in and out. So it's not really exciting to do it that way. But if you only have base game and not like growing together at all with the milestones, then I would suggest doing at least one favorite food and one like dislike food and then age them up because essentially base game has nothing for infants. But it has made, made it a huge eye opener on how extreme infants can be with other packs. But I've been liking it so far. I don't know. But I, I wanted to build a brand new house because I never got a chance to actually utilize a tree house yet or build one. So being able to have like extra space for all of my infants and my, you know, children and matriarch to go sleep in, it's made the challenge so much more worthwhile because essentially the side yard is considered like their work area where they can work on school projects, play in the little backyard, get their food from the cauldron and just like get away from the main house. I get so excited whenever my Sim children get an A in school. I'm like, oh my gosh, you can finally age up. You can be a teenager or age up and get out of my house. Like it's a dream come true. I love it through and through no matter what. So if you've played this challenge, let me know in the comments below of like what you tend to do. Because the way that I do it is like the quick, dirty, and easy cauldron for never spoiled food outside. And it's like a lot of servings. And then I have like the display case from get to work where I store my food in there that lasts a little bit longer as like a refrigerated storage and then I also have lab tablets everywhere I make sure I get the science projects from parenthood so that way they can get their skills up and also you know responsibility and character values and stuff like that up as well but it has made the challenge a lot more interesting from time to time as we get more packs this added gameplay that is helpful or hurtful you never really know. Now, I don't really remember if I ever uploaded the original OG OG house of like my first time playing the 100 baby challenge back in 2019. If I did, it was probably ugly and never decided to actually upload it. But I do remember doing like some type of like rags to 100 baby where I would be very poor with zero simoleons and I would earn money from like painting, gardening, klepto stealing, 
all that fun stuff. Because, like, it's so weird thinking about, like, back to 2019, we had toddlers, but we didn't, like, have eco lifestyle. We didn't have, um, we just didn't have a lot of things back then, which made the challenge a lot more simple. And I think if we had eco lifestyle, it would make the challenge a little bit easier if you were doing like a whole rags to 100 baby scenario because dumpster diving is really lucrative in that challenge because you go dumpster diving and you might find like a 14,000 simoleon fridge or a stove. Like the stuff you find in the dumpster in The Sims is wild. And I love what you find in there. So I wanted to be able to like really go ham with this house of having everything they needed from like you know, storage bins, tree houses, science projects, bedrooms, a basement for activities, like everything. And I like this. I do like this build. And normally I only build suburban houses anyway, because that's like my main house that I tend to do anyway. And I feel like I'm not making any sense right now, because I'm just talking and words are just like fumbling out of my mouth. And if you don't know, I have ADHD and I'm just like, I'm just talking. And words are just coming out of my mouth. It's like my OG like YouTube days where I would literally record videos at 3 a.m. every time I would make a new speed build. And this was back when I didn't have like face cam in my videos. But I would always like record my voiceovers at 3 a.m. And I don't know why. I would just do it just because I was up and I was bored and I wanted to record and upload a video. And now I'm just like, you know, I have my face in every video now. Even my speed builds, just not my creative sims because that's just boring. But not at 3 a.m. Because when I'm at 3 a.m. and I have face cam, I get very loopy and I don't know what I'm saying. But you know what? Adds to the chaos and the randomness that are all my videos at this point. But this was like a, this was definitely one of my favorite builds I did with, um, was adding in like the tree house with growing together. Cause I did do another build recently for the career legacy challenge where each gen is a different career, different aspiration, different skills and like fun little side quests you can do. And I think they're really fun because when you're playing the Sims in a challenge setting, it's less boring because you have something to do in each generation or different career levels. Let's say you're a doctor and you quit your job at level five to become a entertainer for some random reason because you don't like being a doctor anymore. So you move from Willow Creek to Stan Sequoia to start a new life as an entertainer. You know, stuff like that really spices up the gameplay and spices up the family tree a little bit more. Um, because that way each family sim has like a different career, different mindset on life. So that's what I've been mainly doing of like not being bored in the sims is trying where each gen is a different career, different, you know, aspiration, different world to live in and like even different storyline or different challenge. Like I am making a challenge called the Mixed Match Legacy Challenge, which by the way is already up if you want to go play it yourself. But I've been playing this challenge that I created where each generation is a different challenge where I'm basing it off of like different challenges that I have played or have liked. And it's created a nice inspiration for myself and for others that are like stuck on gameplay and not knowing what to do for their like next gen, especially continue on for 10 generations and even after that. So nonetheless, I think that playing challenges different ways can spice it up a little bit just for yourself and for other people too. I don't know. But nonetheless, I think what I'm going to do is actually going to go into the game and show you all the house in real time. That way it's a lot easier for you all to see what the house looks like. And I didn't really cut out too much stuff. So what you see is what we have, but let's go ahead and go into the game and have it all slow down and easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So now that we're into the game, I can show you the house in its current state. And let me just tell you, it's a little bit chaotic, a little bit messy, but that comes with the package of the 100 baby. Now, personally, when building this house, I didn't really know what I wanted to do initially, but I knew that I needed like a big lot, like a 40 by 30 to build on. So that way, eventually we can expand on the house to be a little bit bigger if need be. But for right now, this is how big it's going to get until I decide to build a brand new house, probably on the same lot as well. So when it came to the side yard, I wanted to have everything that the kids needed and more some, mainly for like entertainment purposes. So I added in the treehouse from Growing Together that we built by ourselves. And then also the swing set, the ball pit, the toddler slide, 
a row of school projects that will eventually be better for extra credit and school performance. I even added in the cauldron that we got from Mom with Magic that is so perfect to use, very lucrative. Because once you make something from the cauldron, 12 servings, never spoils, and the kids and the teens grab as they go when they get hungry. So for the basement, I mainly have my newborns and my infants down here 99% of the time, because as soon as they age it from this lovely bassinet, they go ahead and sit on one of these lovely play mats to do their milestones, their tummy time, and their sleeping and eating because upstairs, they never see the light of day. And sometimes I try to take them upstairs, but they just don't like upstairs for some reason. But we have our lovely dollhouse, our little table, and of course their private own little bathroom to do all their bathing milestones and of course potty squatties over here on this side and I thought was very cute. As for the main floor, the foyer area is really bland and boring because I didn't want to add too much stuff because I knew over time as kids age up they make activity paintings and drawings that I want to decorate the walls with as like their own art so I kind of left one of the walls blank on this side and added in like a mirror for like checking your, your teeth and your speech and other things too before you walk out the door. And then for the living room over here, I didn't do too much again decorating over time. Plus with toddlers and infants, I've learned that they tend to get, in, get stuck a lot and I wanted to have at least enough room for them to sit, sleep, and do whatever they needed to do. So mainly the living room is just there for like seating purposes and watching TV and also of course their activity blocks over here. Mainly they only get iPads or rabbit tablets because they don't really learn their skills fast enough for me on the nesting blocks. So Wabbit tablets all day, or day. And then over here we have the refrigerated storage bin that we got from Get to Work, which is very lucrative I find because once you make a lot of meals and store them in here, the kids will grab them whenever they get hungry, plus they last a little bit longer when they're in here and refrigerated. And then of course we have some photo albums that we got from growing together that eventually I will stack up and fill in with a bunch of photos that we got from all of the potential already used up sims that we have kids with and personally I think we look pretty fantastic in every single photo. Hunter is stunning of having 17 babies so far which we're currently pregnant right now with baby number 18 crossing my fingers that it is an occult baby that way we can like have some success in getting at least to at least 25 or 50 before Hunter becomes an elder. And then over here we have the kitchen, which I wanted to keep it relatively small. That way we didn't have too much space when we're cooking, especially when Sims get stuck, because the less space you have in a kitchen, the less things get caught on fire. So a small kitchen seemed like the perfect thing to do. And then over here we have the toddler's bedroom where they all mainly just sleep from time to time and do all their potty squatty needs. And then of course their main private bathroom. As for the upstairs is where basically where the rest of the family tends to sleep. Like Hunter sleeps over here, child through teens tend to sleep up here. And then we have our basic nursery that no one ever uses. And let me just tell you, I made this nursery for the sole purpose to actually use it from time to time. But since all the infants tend to stay in the basement on their play mat, no one's up here. So I'm having Hunter right now, currently changing all of the cribs into a toddler bed. That way toddlers can sleep upstairs and infants can sleep in the recent now toddler bedroom once I figure out things over time. But right now, infant nursery over here, Hunter's bedroom over here, we have her computer, her bookcase, and also her easel that she doesn't really use as much anymore because she tends to make all of her money from selling the toys that she gets from the mailbox whenever her kids age up into a next life stage. Because Hunter has a lot of siblings, if you know, you know, she is the 300th child to be born from the previous gen. So a lot of siblings send a lot of toys to their nieces and nephews. So gotta stack them up as you can. But I thought easel making was a perfect way to gain some more skills and also decorate the house a little bit better over time. And then over here we have the kids bedroom where they all tend to sleep. There are a small little workstation and then of course the other bedroom. But either way as always, do let me know down in the comments below of what do you thought today's build especially if you've ever done the 100 baby challenge and completed it if you did not complete it what was the last number of babies you've had in the challenge but lo and behold i hope you all enjoyed it and i will see you all in the next video bye